So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make the do-it-yourself graphic labels that I use for my samples. And like you've seen in quite a few other videos, I usually just staple my sample samples onto my business card. If I'm going to be attaching them to a bag or something like that, then it makes it easier. Sometimes I don't do that, but a lot of the time I do. So I have one just to show you here. But what I'm going to be showing you how to make today is the actual graphic labels that I use for my samples. I get a lot of requests on how I make them, and it's actually really, really simple. So some people do a similar idea, and they spend a fortune on Vistaprint, and they make their uh, labels the same way that they would their business cards. And that is they make the graphic and then they add it to Vistaprint and then they can get cards or mini cards and use those. Now, the downfall with using the Vistaprint option um, is definitely not quality. If you want the really, really high quality, then you can do that. But you would need the bigger bags to fit the cards. So you would need to bag your samples in a bigger bag. And it's also a lot more costly. So this way that I'm about to show you is really super cheap. It would cost you um, under $3 to make hundreds of these if you're not including the printer ink. The printer ink is probably the most expensive um, material in the whole process. So I'm going to get to it. So you really don't need much to do these. Uh, the main thing that you're going to need is a computer, some way to make your graphic, and then you're going to need a printer to actually print off your graphic. But aside from that, you just need a pair of scissors, a stapler, some other way to attach your paper. I like to use the stapler. I know you can see the staples, but um, it doesn't bother me, and I find that they're a lot more sturdy that way. You know that they're not going to flap up. And then you're going to need some kind of cardboard. So lately I've been using cue cards just because they are the cheaper option and you can actually make more than one label out of each cue card. I used to use just blank business cards and you can buy those at uh, Walmart or any craft store. It's just the print your own business cards. They're blank and they're a little bit thicker. That's the only thing that I like better about the business card forms. But I have switched to using the cue cards because... Like I said, they're cheaper. You can buy um, hundreds of them for a dollar, and I can make two or three labels on each cue card. So to me, I find that it's worth it to use the cue cards, even though they are a little bit thinner because it still does the trick. And then of course, you're just gonna need your wax to make your samples. So the first step to making the do-it-yourself labels is obviously to get yourself a graphic. And I am going to attach these two graphics in the video so that you guys can use them. But if you're looking to do some other sense or to put a personalized touch to your labels, I'm also going to do a really quick tutorial on how you can make these. So what you're going to want to do first is you're going to want to open your browser. And you want to go to www.pickmonkey.com. Com. So, P-I-C, monkey. And it's going to bring you to this home page. So, to start from scratch, you're going to want to go into the design tab, but don't click on it right away. Hover over it to get sizing options because the size that they give you when you click to just design right away uh, doesn't fit a lot of things. It's usually awkwardly too wide or too big and a lot of your image will get cut out on most programs. So always hover over the design. And as you can see, there's different options for different types of graphics that you want to make. If you're going to be doing um, some kind of photo that you want to share on Facebook or Instagram, then you're going to want to use the square so that none of the visual is cut out from the actual news feed. If you're going to design yourself a Facebook cover, then obviously you want to use the Facebook cover option. They have this size perfectly to a desktop view on Facebook. Uh, then you have a 4x6, 5x7, 8x10, and custom. And what happens when you click custom is it actually lets you put in your own dimensions. 
And so what that's good for is if you're making business cards or making um, a YouTube channel art or anything where you need the actual dimensions to make sure that your picture's fitting properly, you're going to want to look up what the dimensions are for the specific image you're trying to make and you'd want to just uh, punch it into customs. But for this particular video where I'm going to be doing the labels, I want to have as much room on my page as I can to make as many labels as I can. So I'm going to use the 8 by 10 because I find that when I'm making printables, the 8 by 10 is the perfect size to fill up your whole page. It's basically the size of a normal sheet of print paper. So what's going to happen when you click on that, it's going to bring you here to the 8 by 10 blank page. So for paper, you're going to probably want to keep your background white so that you don't waste printer ink. But as you can see, you can change your background color to whatever you want for different types of graphics. We're just going to leave ours white. Now for a label, the first thing that I want to do is I want to get the label outlined so that it's not just kind of floating on the page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to this little butterfly, which is overlays. And it's going to give me all of PicMonkey's graphic designs that they have, which they have thousands. They have everything you could possibly imagine here to make your own graphics. But what I want today is labels. So when you get into labels, you have a whole section here of basic labels, shapes that you can use if you're a new member. And then down here, if you're a paid member, um, they call it a royal member. They also give you some advanced shape options. And I really like this one. I've tried this one and this one and some of these ones for my labels. But my personal favorite so far has ended up being this one. So I'm just going to use this one for my video. But if you aren't a Royal or a PicMonkey member, you can of course just select one of these shapes and make your label with that. So what I'm going to want to do first is, as you can see, the label is black and we don't want it to be black. So here in the color options where it's black, I'm going to switch that up to white. And then you want to decide what color you want the outer edges of your label to be. So what I do is I usually go by the color of what I'm going to be making. So if I'm making, uh, say, my Apple S'mores one, I have a brown outline to kind of go with the matching of my graphics. Uh, for my jammy time, I have a blue outline. And today I'm going to be doing pear blossom and cucumber because I have some customers who ordered in March that live far away and they are going to be coming soon to get their order. So I want to make them some pear blossom and cucumber samples and I want to get rid of the pear blossom and cucumber that I have left. So once I have my color, I'm going to want to start with the graphic itself. So usually I start with the name because the name of the scent is what you're going to want to highlight the most with your sample. It's what you're going to want them to see. So I'm just going to find a nice font to use that goes with Fair Blossom and Cucumber. I have a lot of my favorite fonts already. I usually know what I'm looking for before I even start. So you just want to type in your scent name, obviously, first. And then you can stretch that so that it's all in one line. And then to make it smaller, you'll just want to either use the sides here, or you can use this side lever here, or you can type in the exact number um, font size you want. So I'm just going to size it so that it fits my label. And then I want to change the color. And now I think I'm just going to do 
this. And then I am going to make my outline. I do advise that whenever you know for sure you like the look of something, that you come up here to this button to combine your images or your text to the page. And what that'll do is it'll make it so it's not editable anymore. And it, as you can see, I'm clicking here and it's not moving. And the reason that I do recommend doing that whenever you know that your image looks the way that you want it to look is just because once you get filling this with smaller images and putting more text in and you go to try to move something, it becomes harder because you click on something that you didn't mean to click on. So we have our name and our outline. Now we want to start with the scent description and then what I usually do is I add a little graphic to go with it. So how I get that is, of course, you could just have your flyer handy and you could hand type in the description. But to make it easier, I like to actually go into my website just to cheat a little bit and copy and paste it because it does make it easier if you have that access. So it was February sent. And so you're just going to want to copy and paste the description. And when I'm doing descriptions, I like to keep them in plain text. I like to make the title text more visual, but I like to stick with the standard text for my description. And I usually keep it black, but I'm actually completely out of black ink, so you're not going to see me using black at all in this video just because I know that I have colored ink left and I know that it's still going to work if I use color. Now another thing that I like to do that you don't have to do is I like to make it so that each sentence fits in one line. So I would just paragraph this. And this. And you can have your text align to the right like this, align to the left, or centered. Now I always find that it looks better when it's centered but I guess that's a matter of personal opinion. And then I'm just going to want to move it here and size it so that it all fits. Looks like I'm going to have to move that down. this a little bit bigger so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight and I'm going to go down here to size and I'm just going to make it two or three sizes bigger so that the headline is standing out a little bit more. And now I have my title and my description. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read what's in the particular scent that I'm graphicking. So in this one we have Pear Blossom, Jasmine, Honeydew, and Mayer Lemons, and Cucumber Water. So the prettiest in that would probably be the Honeydew and the Jasmine, maybe the Pear Blossom. So what I do then is you're just going to go to Google or wherever you find your images. And I find the cutest way to find images for editing is to add clip art after whatever you're looking for. So if I'm looking for a honeydew, I'm just going to type in honeydew clipper. And then as you can see, the pictures that come up are more representative for making graphics and things like that. And you have all the different shapes and sizes to choose from. And I like this one because it's pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to save that and I'm going to save it in this video folder. And what you want to do to add your own photos is you're going to go back in here to overlays and scroll all the way up to the top and it will give you an option to add your own. So as you can see, I have my honeydew. Now, when you add an image, unless it's a PNG form and what a PNG form means is that it doesn't have any background. Um, but when it's not a PNG form and when you're getting the photo off of somewhere online or on Google and a lot of the times, it's going to have a white background. And if you have the patience to sit there and erase all along the edges, you can click here on eraser and you can go around the edges. 
but I never do that unless I have a different colored background because this only works on white. So what you can do is you can go in here to where it says blend modes and you can actually change the blend mode to either darken or multiply and they both do similar things. And as you can see, what it did is it just completely removed the white background. So then I can get it close to where I want it to be. And it's not going to affect anything. So next I want Jasmine. And it's giving me a lot of princess images, but it did give me this cute one. So since I want this to be quick, I'll just use that. And I'm going to do the same thing, click darken. You know, where it's interfering with that, I am going to use the eraser because it will show if I don't. But like you can see, it's only a few clicks. So now you'll have your title, your description, a little bit of a graphic, and you're almost ready to go. You could print it here, but I like to kind of do mine a little bit more detailed, and this area here would stand out to me as being empty. So what I did do is I grabbed a picture of cucumber water because as you can see, there's some cucumber water in the scent and it's also named pear blossom and cucumber. So I wanted to represent where the cucumber comes from. And I'm just gonna slip that in here. And then I'm also going to go down here and you're going to see an area called garnishes. And what those are is just little patterns, as you can see, and I really like the royal ones for underlines. So I'm probably going to use this one. And the reason that I saved this part for last is just because I would usually keep it black and I have to find a color that will match my, my overall design. So I'm thinking I'm going to go with a lighter green with a nice yellow background. And I think that'll probably print off nice. So there you have it. And then when you're finished, of course, you're going to want to crop the edges so that you have enough room on your paper, because if you leave it like this, it's going to crop a bunch of blank space in between each label. I do recommend leaving a little bit of space so that they fit and they're not crammed, but not too much. But this much room is probably perfect and then you can crop and save And first I need to print off a couple more Jammy Time labels because I do have Jammy Time samples done up and ready to bag and sample. So I'm going to meet you back here to show you how to print the labels off. We'll get started on how to actually make the labels. So once you've created your visual, you're just going to want to open it up and right click and open up your print menu. Now when you click to print, it's going to give you this view, and obviously you don't want to print a full page, half cut off view of the visual for a label. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to uncheck the fit to frame, 
and it's going to shrink down the photo. And again, obviously, if you're making labels, you're not going to want a full page photo. So how you're going to fix that is you're going to scroll down here to wallet size. And that's going to give you enough room to make nine labels per page. So down here where it says copies of each picture, you're going to want to just put that up to nine. And as you can see, it's going to fill up the page with your labels. So once you have your page filled, you can then print your graphic. And I'm going to meet you back here once mine has printed to show you the next step. So I have my sheet of labels and I'm going to show you the next step. So what you're going to want to do first is you're going to want to cut out the labels to make them individual, of course. So you're just going to want to cut in between. So then you're going to have your pile of nine starts of labels. And what we're going to do is you're just going to take one and you're going to take your cue card and you're going to want to use the lined side so that the back is blank. And you take your label and if you see that you can only when you push it up you can see the lines. So you want to position your label so that you have the most room and that it's as close to the edge as possible. And then you could just start cutting that way and then attach it later. But I like to staple first so that my label isn't moving all around while I'm trying to cut it. So what I do is I just staple the corners So you're going to want to staple around your graphic so that your staples aren't blocking any of your picture. And like I said before, you can still see the staples in the corner, but I don't think it affects the label. And then the last step is just to cut around the edges. So you just cut And then you have your label. And at this point, we're ready to bag our label and attach to the business card or do whatever it is that you plan to do with your sample and graphic label. So I have here um, an already completed Apple S'mores sample. And then I have our graphic label we just made, an empty baggie and my jammy time sample. So obviously the first step is to put the sample in the bag. And I like to put it down at the bottom. And then you can put your graphic label in. And I like to position it so that the actual label is above the sample so you can see the name and the sample and then you can close it up. And so as you can see, um, it still looks nice regardless of the staples and the do-it-yourself material. And so that's why I've been continuing to do it this way because it does the trick for me easily. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna make up a quick little one of these bags 
and you could do whatever you want with your samples, however you plan to utilize them. And I've done this in other videos, the stapling of the business card, which is also pretty straightforward, but I'm going to just do that next. So what I want to do is I want to take just one side of the bag so that it's still able to be opened. And then you're just going to want to find an area on your business card that won't be affected by a staple and staple it down. And then you have your business card with an attached sample. So like I said, you can do whatever you want with this at that point, but I'm just going to make up a cute little bag. So I have my medium sized bag here. I have a product sheet. And then you're just going to want to find an area on your business card that won't be affected by a staple and staple it down. And then you have your business card with an attached sample. So like I said, you can do whatever you want with this at that point, but I'm just going to make up a cute little bag. So I have my medium sized bag here. I have a product sheet. A diffuser sheet. and my sample business card. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold up my product sheet. And my diffuser sheet. And I'm just going to put them in here in position them so that they look nice and so that everything I want to be able to be seen is seen. So you see the Spring Summer 2016 product sheet. You see the picture of the new diffuser. And then I'm just going to slide my business card into the bottom. And if you have any rub and sniff stickers that you want to utilize, uh, this is a perfect way to do so. so I'm just going to put one of those on the front to give it a little bit more visual. And then I'm going to flip my bag over. And you always want to add a label so that your customers know how to order if they want to. So I'm just going to throw that on the back of the bag. And then there I have my very simple and cute Scentsy product sheet. And this will give them all of our product. It'll give them information on the diffuser. It'll give them a chance to try out some of the wax if they have a warmer already. Or to smell the wax if they don't have a warmer already. And then they also have an additional kid scent up here to scratch and sniff. So if you found use in this tutorial, uh, give this video a like and don't forget to share with your downline.